this is where we um, left off from day one. So this is day two. And I asked you to draw this reaction mechanism on a piece of paper. Do you have some limited space on here, but we will work with it. So this is alkylation or bromination. So it means we're going to add bromine to an alkane. And this is a big deal because an alkane has only CH bonds. And this is basically no functionality. So it's hard for that to be a starting material in other reactions. Now what's uh, really nice about this reaction, which is a free radical mechanism, it is the only way in which we can add bromine to the carbon structure. And once you add, uh, make an, your, so your product is going to be an alkyl bromide. Now you all know that alkyl bromides are the starting material for SN1, SN2, E1, and E2 reactions. So you have lots of reactions in which you can functionalize an alkyl bromide into other functional groups. But this is the only way you can functionalize an alkane, and it's the free radical mechanism. So in free radical mechanisms, there's always an initiation step. I said always. There's always propagation steps. And then there's always a termination step. And really, the only mechanism that you really need to do is the propagation steps to be considered a correct mechanism. But it's also good, I like for students to include the initiation steps because they set your propagation steps up. So the first thing that happens is this bromine bromine bond is pretty weak. And so H nu, H nu is, you learn from general chemistry, E equals H nu, so that's a photon. And I think this is blue light, so it's at certain wavelength. And that light wavelength can break this bromine bromine single bond. This does a homolytic cleavage. So the homolytic cleavage generates the bromine radical. And so that has to happen for anything else to happen. Nothing's going to happen if you don't get a radical. Now these free radicals, they're pretty um, reactive. Okay, so here we are, propagation step one. You want to copy down the bromine radical that you just generated. In a propagation step, on the starting material, you always need a free radical plus one of the starting materials. So we're going to re you take the time and you draw that out. So propagation step, you always have a free radical plus starting material, and it needs to generate on the product side a free radical plus the product. And then the free radical, you'll have another propagation step. So now you have to make a decision here which hydrogen is going to be extracted. Because in this reaction mechanism, hydrogen gets abstracted. So you've got to look at a thing called BDE, bond dissociation energies. And you have to decide which Carbon hydrogen bond has the lowest bond dissociation energy. And you can see tables in your chapter of what these are. You'll find that this hydrogen has the lowest, the benzylic hydrogen has the lowest um, bond dissociation energy. I think that that one is around 362 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so that is um, very low. The other hydrogens like this one I think is like 462 this one might be like 432 okay notice that this one doesn't have a hydrogen this is a benzylic what makes it benzylic it's the carbon that's bonded to the aromatic ring okay all right so setting up your abstraction that's the first thing that happens this free radical Electron is going to go, and you want to point, that means the fish hook arrow means that's one electron, is going to go 
towards an electron is negative, the hydrogen nucleus. Okay, the nucleus is positive. So this arrow points towards that carb, the hydrogen nucleus, and then the electron, you got two electrons in this bond between carbon and hydrogen. One electron is going to go with the hydrogen, and then the other electron is going to go onto the carbon. Okay, so you need three fish hook arrows and See if I can erase this. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to draw the products here. Well, you have H, Br. So that's going to be one of the products. And then you have the free radical intermediate. So you want to draw this free radical intermediate. Now, it's in the name propagation. So for this to be propagating, you have to generate a free radical every time. That's a propagation step. Okay, now we're at propagation step two. You want to actually copy this free radical down. So when you do that, We're just going to copy that free radical down because remember propagation step, you have to have a free radical plus you have to choose something from the starting material. Okay, so now we're going to choose the BR. That's the starting material and we've got to generate a product plus a new free radical because that's a propagation. It's got to keep going. So what happens now is you always go from the electron because that's your very reactive um, carbon radical and it's going to go towards the nucleus of the bromine, those two electrons. One's going to go with the bromine, the other one's going to go with the bromine. It's homolytic cleavage. And then you draw the product. So now we have this product. And we have a new bond, the bromine, and then we generate a bromine radical. So then the product here, you can draw up here is the bromine on the benzene, the benzylic position. Now this is propagation step and it's very important that you keep doing the bromine. Now this is a thing called Hess's Law. And I don't know if you remember that from Gen Chem. But if you do Hess's Law and you add propagation step one and propagation step two, you could see that this would be like a spectator like a spectator ion, right? Because they're, they're on the product and the reactive side and you add these reactions up. Okay, they cancel out. See the bromine cancels each other out. So you're left with your overall reaction, which is your starting material plus bromine and it yields your product, the HBr and the um, benzyl alkyl compound, alkyl bromide compound. Um, that's another way to check yourself to make sure that you did the mechanism of propagation steps one and two correctly. Um, as you can see that if you had to just pick the product, that's your product D. Now for a termination step, you can just pick any radical, but, but you've got to, in a termination step, you've got to have two free radicals come together to make a covalent bond. You could have picked um, two of the um, carbon radicals and made a dimer. All right, so we're just going to go through some slides, make sure we're getting all the concepts and everything. Um, so when you do a radical mechanism, you need initiation, termination, and propagation. And so you just need to be able to recognize these steps. Sometimes you might have a multiple choice question that says pick out a correct initiation step for this reaction, or pick out a correct termination step, or a propagation two steps. So, uh, you need to be able to do that. So one is homolytic cleavage. You can see the fish hook arrows, the electrons are splitting equally, and this is an initiation step. A propagation step always has a free radical plus some kind of neutral compound, and then you're going to have to generate a free radical in the product. Um, 
So in class, I showed this, an example of this. This would be like if you had an HBR and ROAR. So if you remember, HBR and ROAR generates the BR radical, and then the BR radical adds to this carbon. These electrons will um, go there, and then you get this intermediate. right here and then that's propagation step one this is a p1 um, this is a free radical let me put that there make sure you see it and then this is propagation step two where reacts with hbr and then that free radical will go to the h and this is your anti mark um, hydro for uh, bromination reaction. And so whenever you have any kind of peroxide with HBr, ROAR, it could be CH3OO, CH3, it's this weak oxygen-oxygen bond that's prone to homolytic cleavage that generates a reactive species that generates a um, initiation reaction to generate the bromine radical that makes this a free radical mechanism and that's how you get the anti-mark. You remember the HBR where we did electrophilic addition and if you don't you need to go back and look at the electrophilic addition of HBR because that follows Markovnikov's addition and that is a heterolytic. Um, heterolytic is when you get positive cations, carbocations and anions um, because you get positive and negative species. And there's a different mechanism than free radical, which everything's homolytic cleavage and neutral. Hydrogen abstraction is what we just did the previous slide. And so the bromine radical went and abstracted the hydrogen. You have to figure out which one hydrogen has the lowest bond dissociation energy. And that's the step. This is propagation step one that happens. This is propagation step one that happens there. Um, this one, um, we will do that. It's just something you'll see for halogen. We will not be doing this one. All right, so termination. A termination step has two free radicals that come together to form a covalent bond, and it stops the reaction. A lot of these are chain reactions. The way you control them if you're doing a, something in the laboratory is you're going to want to um, either make it very concentrated or you're going to make it dilute. And then you can also add... Um, terminators which are compounds I think we'll see some you don't have to memorize them or anything but it is one way you can take a, a quench of a free radical that actually will absorb those um, okay so you will only see chlorination reactions with alkanes typically in um, in your textbook uh, the reason why we don't like chlorination reaction, it is not selective. So if you work in a laboratory, you're not going to do that reaction. It's not selective. It's good for, for teaching purposes to learn the principles, but uh, basically bromination is selective and is, is a good reaction. Okay, so this is bromination is a good reaction. Um, chlorination is not because it's not selective. But it follows the same mechanism. Uh, and we did this earlier. H nu, this is initiation, homolytic cleavage, you get two free radicals. That's the initiation step. Then you have to abstract a hydrogen. Okay, so this is your propagation step one, where you have a free radical. Um, now, I don't do this. You see how this is like in air? I don't do that. I say this is going to go to a nucleus because this is a negative and the nucleus of hydrogen is a positive. And then these electrons go towards the carbon. So um, if you do that, I will make my little corrections because this is like going in air. Um, and it's just a little thing here, but they need to go towards a nucleus. Okay. And so you can see the difference there. 
But I do like this fish hook arrow showing you this. But um, propagation step one, you abstract a hydrogen. Okay, so that's what you're going to take a hydrogen. That's the first step. And it forms a carbon cation free radical. You got to form a free radical. And you also form HCl, which is part of the product. This is your starting one of the starting materials. And then you copy this free radical down right here. And then you're going to have to pick another starting material. It's on the reaction. And then that makes it one of the products. So this is another product for the reaction. And then you generate a new free radical so it can keep propagating. So that's propagation. You better have a free radical on both sides. If you don't, when I'm grading, I can say on an open response, well, this is wrong. I don't even have to look at it in detail because the propagation cell is going to have a free radical on both sides of the reaction arrow. And you need to have starting material and product. Okay, termination step, you can pick any of these. And basically, they're all making a covalent bond that then ends the reaction. This is showing you that you can add the propagation steps to get the next the net reaction. This is Hess's law. And so you can see that these are on both sides of the um, reaction equation. And so when they're on both sides, they cancel out. And then if so, if you add them all up here, you have methane, you have chlorine. So these are your starting materials. And then here's your product. Okay, so um, that's your net reaction. Notice that you've taken the functional group transformation, and that's how you want to organize all your reactions in organic two, is an alkane, which does nothing, and it's very unreactive, and now you've made an alkyl chloride, an alkyl halide, which is great for SN1, SN2, E1, and E2 reactions. So you functionalize that. Okay, this is showing you that chlorination is not selective. Remember I told you it's not a happy, good reaction to do in the laboratory because it's not selective. As you see here, um, it's going to abstract um, multiple hydrogens and it's going to extract all kinds of different hydrogens. You will get mixtures. Um, I was telling you one way to terminate a reaction is to add a radical terminator. You don't have, or these are initiators. Um, this is showing you why these are initiators. This bond here between oxygen is uh, a very weak bond. It has a very low bond dissociation energy. Okay, so basically blue light or heat can break these open. So how do you measure bond dissociation energies? You can look at delta H charts and you can see 243, 159. That's like your peroxides. A lot of times you'll see something like that. Um, ACL peroxides, uh, benzoyl peroxide. That's actually in a lot of the, um, like this is a benzyl group. Um, a lot of your anti-zit medicines. Look at that, 121 kilojoules. Um, so basically at 80 degrees Celsius, which is lower than boiling water, right? Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Um, you can generate that free radical. Oh, this is what I was saying, inhibitors. Um, a lot of times you can add inhibitors and they will stop your action. You don't have to memorize these. Just be aware that this is a way to control the chain reaction. Um, this is showing you the bond association energies. You don't have to memorize these. You will need to know the pattern, though, uh, which one is the hydrogen that gets abstracted. And I will show you kind of how to do that. This is showing you um, the overreaction, the reactions of using the different halogens with alkane. Um, you'll see that this is, we don't use fluorine. And the reason why is this is so exothermic that it's explosive. Okay, so we don't do that. It's explosive. 
Iodide is so endothermic that it will never happen. Okay, so this will not happen. You'll be there uh, for five years waiting on that reaction to happen. Okay, so the ones that are exothermic that aren't too exothermic are these um, chlorination and bromination. So they're in the range of reactions that can happen, do happen. And like I said, that this is because, you, and this is the reason why you look at here, propagation step one for chlorination is exothermic. Therefore, it's non-selective. So it's not very useful. Um, the propagation step one is endothermic for bromination. However, the reaction is exothermic, and this makes it selective and good. It's a good reaction. Just smiley face. There's some hair. So, see, too violent, too exothermic, uh, endothermic, too slow, not going to happen. All right, so these are kind of your learning objectives. I want you to focus on the three free, ra three free radical reactions. Make sure you have three free radical reactions with their mechanisms in your notes, folks, because you will see them on your quizzes. You will see them on your exams. And then and just make sure you can draw those reaction mechanisms. You've already learned um, one today. That was the alkylation of an alkane. That was one of them. We did that. Remember, that was this one. With the benzyl group. Bromine and H2. And then we also did another one where we did the anti-mark with HBr. And then ROAR. Oh, we'll put it actually. I don't like R groups. And so that was the anti-mark. So those were two. Um, we have a third reaction in which I will tell you about coming up. So look for three reactions and their mechanisms for radical reactions. And if you're doing your POGL 6B, um, I have to have um, in your POGL, I have to see all reaction mechanisms. Now each problem, additional problem, is worth two points. So you're either going to get zero, one, or two on that assignment. This is a bonus. These are a, this is a bonus quiz points. Okay, so I'm not going to waste my time. If you're not turning in, if you don't have structures drawn and you don't have reaction mechanisms, you're going to get a zero. If I see that everything is pretty good and I just have to make one or two corrections and I think that you, you got something out of that, you get a two. Okay, you're going to get a one if I have to really help you, but yet it looks like that you watched the video and you tried. These Pogles have videos. Um, I have a hundred students, and so if you don't want to do them, that's fine with me. I won't grade them. I won't give you feedback, but if you turn them in in your class, and I would say turn them in early. You can ask other people to do Pogle. Turn them in early. You turn them in that class, you're going to get them the next day, okay? So we've been talking about Pogel 6B. I just need a couple of those additional problems. You can look at the Pogel assignments to see uh, technically if you want to get points for them. They're due by exam one. There are certain ones that are due by exam one. Um, but I have to see the structures drawn and in order to get those points. And the nice thing is these are going to help you. Um, that's the only reason why I do them because I do think they help. The, your open responses on the exams. Usually the exams are 15 multiple choice questions and 10 open response questions. So the POGLs, they allow you to draw these mechanisms out. You can turn them in on a piece of paper and then I can give you that feedback and you would want that in order to um, do well on your exams. So anyway, the one POGL reactions that we're doing here, we're doing three of them and I think they're all covered in that Pogel 6B. This was that second one. So here we are. Um, this is anti-Makovnikov. And it's anti-Makovnikov addition of HBr. 
um, to an alkene. So we're actually adding it to an alkene. So you looked at, you learned electrophilic addition where you took this with just HBr and then that mechanism was generating a carbocation and you made the more substituted one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four carbocation. You classified it. You said, okay, that's a secondary carbocation. You did the test to make sure that would have been a primary, that would have been a primary. So it's going to stay at the secondary. And then the bromide comes in. See double headed arrows here because you're doing heterolytic cleavage and that's how you add the bromine to the more substituted carbon of the carbon-carbon double bond. That is electrophilic addition. Electrophilic addition. Okay, this is free radical addition of HBr to an alkene. And it's going to go anti-mark. And the reason why is because when you generate this, you generate the initiation step. And then that is still another initiation step because you got to add HBr. It's going to do the hydrogen abstraction to generate the bromine radical. And now you can do your propagation step. Propagation step one, you take your starting material plus your bromine radical. It doesn't matter if you put the bromine radical first, or the, but you got to make sure you have both of those. And then you can do your addition. This is going to add here, and you got three fish hook arrows. And this is your intermediate, folks. The bromine has added here, and you have a free radical intermediate. Now, this free radical intermediate is a secondary free radical. This is important. Free radicals follow the same stability pattern as carbocations. And even better, they have no rearrangement. So here we have a secondary um, free radical, secondary free radical. That's better than a primary. Okay, so here you have two choices. And so then that propagation step two, you copy that down. And now you react it with HBr, and now it's going to abstract the hydrogen and one, two, three, four. So this is the anti-mark addition and you made an alkyl halide. And so that is one, two, three, four, secondary C is your answer. Okay, so this is, we've talked about Chlorination and bromination happen with alkanes. We've talked about fluorination does not because it's explosive to exothermic. We said iodination does not happen because it's too slow. It's endothermic. But chlorination and bromination are just right. And this is why, this slide tells you why bromination is selective whereas chlorination is not. And it's this first step here. You see that's propagation step one, the hydrogen abstraction. The hydrogen abstraction is endothermic. Okay. Uh, the problem with the chlorination is hydrogen abstraction is exothermic, and that means it will select any and every hydrogen, but not the bromine. The bromine is going to take the one hydrogen that has the lowest bond dissociation energy. Both of them are exothermic overall. Like so if you added all this up and did Hess's law, you would see that. 
Okay, so this is our reaction energy diagram. Um, when I was in face-to-face -face class yesterday, I reviewed the SN1 and SN2 reaction energy diagrams. Um, so I'm going to ask that you do that and be able to match SN1 and SN2 reactions. I think we did something like, um, what was this reaction versus what was this reaction mechanism? Um, and so review those reactions. Hopefully you can write those reaction mechanisms and SI reaction energy diagrams. Um, you need to be reviewing these because you will be taking the ACS exam and 50%, which is 35 out of 70 questions, are from Organic 1. Okay, so this is the time to review reaction energy diagrams for SN1 and SN2 reactions. Um, you'll notice that if you do this, you'll see that this is a tertiary alkyl halide that gives you an intermediate, a carbocation intermediate. These are intermediates, okay? Whenever you have a valley here, this is an intermediate. We have a valley there. We have an intermediate. Okay, so this is SN, um, SN1. SN2, we just go straight to the product, and we have no valley, no intermediate. We just have an, a transition state. So if you were looking at a reaction energy diagram for this, you would just see something like that, okay? There's no valley, just a transition state. For something like this, you would have to see a valley and two humps, right? So here, in these reactions, we have propagation step one and propagation step two. And so if you have something like this and you react it with um, chlorine, right, or the chlorine radical, right, and then you take that hydrogen, this is propagation step one. Right? HCl. And then this propagation step two. And you could do that with bromine. But you see you have a just like you had a carbocation here, just like you had this carbocation intermediate, here you have a free radical intermediate. And so that's why you have two humps here. This is how to read reaction energy diagrams. This, the propagation steps are two steps, but this is just showing you in chlorination, if you took the difference between these two in, in propagation step one, this is exothermic. Do you see that that's exothermic? Well. Here in the bromination, if you take this step here, can you see that this propagation step one is endothermic? And so that's why um, bromination is more selective. And it's showing you the reaction energy diagram. One of the things you're expected to know in organic one and two that you will be tested over is can you assign reaction energy diagrams? Do you understand how to read them? Could you draw a picture of them? All right, um, so this is showing you that if you do a chlorination reaction, that here we have primary hydrogens. This which hydrogen is going to be extracted, and this one has secondary, and so you're going to get a significant amount of both products. Look at this, you get 60% and 40%. See, this would be a sad day if you were working in the lab because, you know, you'd have to separate these. One of the questions I ask on your quiz coming up next Friday is how are these two compounds related? That won't be these compounds, it'll be a different compound, but that is a review question. You do have about five review questions on quiz one, and one of them is how these compounds are related. So are they not related? They're different. Are they constitutional isomers? Are they diastereomers? Are they enantiomers? Well, how do you do? First thing you want to do is figure out, okay, that's carbon 3, the molecular formula 3, 6, uh, 7, Cl. You do the same thing with the molecular formula here, C3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
HCl. Since they have the same molecular formula, they're going to be related. Okay, so that's the first thing you check for. And then you say, okay, let's name it. This is 2-chloropropane. You all need to review naming. That's going to be another one of your review questions. And remember, you're going to have to review R and S. Um, the nice thing is the quizzes, you get two opportunities. They'll be open from Thursday evening until Saturday at 11.59 um, p.m. on Saturday. I will record your best score. You'll have 60 minutes. You can't go forward or backward, uh, but you can use your notes and stuff like that. And if you miss it, that's just too bad. Um, I don't have makeup because we do have a bonus six. But so you might want to just kind of review some organic one topics. Naming is one of those things. This would be one chloro propane. Um, so they have different um, no, they have different connectivities, so they are constitutional isomers. So you get a lot of constitutional isomers when you do the chlorination because any of these hydrogens will be abstract. Now, the nice thing about bromination is look at that 97%. Most of the time I'll ask, what is your major organic product? Okay, so you don't, when you're doing bromination, and on Pogo, you don't have to do that one. You just show the mechanism for the major organic product. This is, once again, this is Hamid postulate. Um, I'm not going to ask you about Hamid's postulate, but it means that the transition state, which we have to guess, we don't know because we don't have any um, instrumentation that can determine exactly what that is, that peak, that high area. But Hamid's postulate says it's closer to whatever the closest um, valley is, right? So it would be this one is closer to the starting material and in this one it's closer to the intermediates. Intermediates is a valley that means for free radicals we have a, a, a lifetime, a half-life, a lifetime, you know, might just be seconds, um, but we can spectroscopy, spectroscopically determine that structure. Um, Okay, I, you can read these. Okay, so they're just showing you that bromination is 100% here because this would be the tertiary hydrogen. Chlorination, you're going to get mixtures because it's not going to be selective. So could you draw this one here? Propagation step one. Um, you're going to get this hydrogen abstraction. So the next few slides are kind of to focus on can you predict which hydrogen is going to be extracted in the propagation step one step. BRBR. And this is the mechanism for that plus BR radical. Um, they're just showing you real data here about the a tertiary hydrogen is going to be 1,600 times faster because it's the fastest um, fluorination. Not really a thing, but it, the tertiary is going to be really great. Okay, you also get a new chiral center. This is going to be racemic because when you get a free radical here, it's sp2, and that means the chlorine um, will be added from the top, because remember you're, you're dealing with planar, and it will also be added from the bottom, and it will be added equally, which is racemic. You'll get both R and S. And that's just showing you this sp2, and so basically you're going to get um, from the top and from the bottom. Anytime you have a planar, same thing with carbocation. SP2 and you get your, if you have a bromide or some kind of anion, it's going to add equally from the top and it's going to add equally from the bottom. So you get racemic. Um, could you name this? Because 
So remember your priorities, if you need to, review that. So that's one. This would be a two priority, a three, and then hydrogen's here. So what would that one be? That would be two chloro butane. And then you got to say, okay, that would be 2s, and s stays s, right? Because the hydrogen's in back, and this would be r. How are these related? These are enantiomers, okay, because they're r and s. Um, so the other thing is, if you have a chiral center, so in this case you have a chiral center, but um, the thing about propagation in step one, let's look at that. Okay, so we have the hydrogen here. We draw the hydrogen in, and then we have our bromine radical, and then the bromine radical is going to take this hydrogen away, right? And so then when you draw your mechanism, I would want to see that you destroyed the stereo center, okay? Because then you let me know 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That is an sp2 carbon, okay? So what that means is it's flat. That radical is flat. Here it's not. This is an sp3, so you have a wedge and a dash. But here it's flat, and when you draw things that are single lines, that means that they're flat. That means they're in the plane, like a piece of paper. And so you lose that stereo center there, and then for propagation step two, you could add your bromine. Okay. So this is our last slide for today. This is where we're going to pick up um, the next time in class. I want you to start looking at the bond association energies for the different hydrogens, okay? So you have to be able to rank the bond association energies and figure out which is the weakest bond association energy, which hydrogen is going to be extracted, because I will expect you to be able to react these with a bromine radical and at this point, you can see that this is an allylic. This is allylic and 364. So that is the hydrogen that's going to get abstracted. And then when that happens, it forms this, right? And what you'll notice is this allylic radical can do resonance. So. If you were to draw that resonance structure, it would be like that to maybe practice resonance structures. Um, what's the so look at see if you can get real numbers for bond association energy for benzylic position for a benzylic hydrogen, an allylic hydrogen, um, tertiary carbon hydrogen, secondary um, and primary. Those are all um, sp3 hydrogens. Also look for sp2 hydrogens, like maybe uh, on a, a ring. And then what about an, an alkyne hydrogen? OK, alkyne, that's an sp carbon hydrogen. This will help you because I do know one of your quiz questions asks for, um, it gives you a, a fancy structure with all these different ones, and you have to decide. A, B, C, D, which one it, hydrogen has the lowest bond association energy? You will have that on your quiz. You will have that on your exam. And you will have, I've seen it on the ACS questions. Okay. And so I'll stay safe, enjoy the snow, and I'll see you next week.